The following is brought to you by GoldSeekMint.com. Silver and gold bullion directly from the mint. GoldSeekMint.com. Welcome to Cambridge House Live. I'm Vanessa Collette here at the Canadian Investor Conference, Vancouver. I'm joined by Chantel Skeven, an economist with Dundee Capital Markets. Welcome, Chantel. Great to have you here. Thank you for having me. I want to talk gold. Uh, the price has made, remained fairly stable in recent weeks. What do you think is causing that? Um, I think that we're seeing, um, we had a, at the beginning of the year, we saw some of the price increase a little bit, and then it's fallen back um, mostly. That was a lot due to, we had a 6% equity market correction. I think gold became a little bit more favorable during that time. And then now we're seeing kind of steady supply. Um, you have your mine supply is pretty, um, we're kind of seeing it um, around the same as last year. And then demand is, is pretty stable right now too. Um, we're One of the things last year that happened and a little bit towards the beginning of the year was ETF sales. And those have really neutralized. Um, they're not not near as much much as before. So I think we're kind of in a, and now we're in a little bit of a seasonally adjust, you know, seasonally um, weak period from April to to August. So, you know, the price we're not thinking it's going to go up any. Hopefully, not not down too much either, though. Now you said you think gold could go moderately higher this year. What do you think will trigger a climb? Um, I think there's a couple things, especially going into the fall. I think that we could see again I think equity markets are you know they're very in favor right now setting new highs the S&P again on Friday and that once investors kind of move away from that if there's a little bit of a hiccup there we're not definitely don't think we're going to see a huge decline we're not um, forecasting recession or anything but equity markets don't continue a climb that will change investor sentiment some just kind of remind remind investors sometimes that goal, um, equity markets don't just keep going. So I think we'll see that. I think we could also see um, once you start into September and the seasonally, um, you know, you start to see that investors coming back um, after after the summer. Um, also, you think that central bank gold um, buying is very steady. So we could see, see a little bit of a um, increase from there. Now you've pointed to geopolitical risk as a potential mover for gold. Why aren't we seeing gold moving higher with what's been happening in Egypt, Thailand, Ukraine? We're just not really seeing a lot of movement or reaction in gold from that. Why do you think that is? Um, I think that right now there's a lot of complacency towards it. We did at the beginning of the year when the you know the re Ukraine um, Russia crisis really heated up. We kind of attribute around a hundred dollars in the price increase at the beginning of the year to that. And then we, you know, the price came back down as things neutralized. I think you're seeing um, the U.S. actually realize that Russia has pulled its troops back from, from the border. And so there's not a lot, a lot going in in there. We think that, you know, the price went down a little last week and maybe, you know, $10 could have been left over, left over from that um, okay. crisis. And so there's not a lot. We think that the risk is still there. I mean, you you always have those geopolitical risks, and once they heat up, you know, people, um, investors tend to move kind of towards gold as a little bit of a safety. Now, what events do you think could trigger a move in gold? Are we waiting for like a major black swan event, or could some other smaller events trigger a move? Um, I think you could see a lot of smaller events. I think that. There's not a major event that I could say, you know, this is really what we're waiting for. But, of course, the, the actual triggers aren't always known or the tipping points aren't always known until, until it actually comes up. But I think that um, gold is, you know, it's um, at a, a spot where it's starting to get investors are thinking that it's a good, you know, it could be a good price. It could be, you know, everybody's kind of thinking, well, where's the bottom? I think. It, it could possibly test the low around, um, you know, 1120. Um, but then you start to see some movement, movement going in. We have a lot of Asia demand. Um, if you see India, in, you know, kind of take off some of their restrictions for gold, I think that that could be a, a good trigger. And with the election and them talking about it, we could see 
see that happen, their current account, which their goal was to kind of bring down their current account deficit. We've seen that really decline over the last few quarters. So I think that that could be definitely a, um, you know, one of the things. So I think a lot of things are kind of working in that, in that favor, you know, you have the equity markets, um, central banks kind of going in there. I think, you know, the, um, there's a lot of talk about that. There's 12 trillion in foreign reserves out there and 62% about those, of those are in US dollars. And you're seeing some of the um, foreign governments, especially Russia, China, kind of saying, we don't want to be holding all these US dollars. And so we could see them kind of starting to um, move a little bit more into gold, which you could say Russia is. I mean, their central bank is, a, you know, kind of a net buyer. Now, moving over to silver, you know, silver has been a little bit less responsive lately. Um, you know, it's an industrial metal, mm -hmm. but it's not moving. What do you think uh, is happening there with silver? Well, um, we we don't cover silver super aggressively um, on our side, but one thing with silver is it's generally, um, we kind of think of it as more volatile than gold. So if gold goes down, you know, 10%, silver goes down 25%, same on the upside. And I think you're seeing kind of the same thing in silver. I think that it's a, it's a bit on, everybody's kind of on that wait and see, um, where is the bottom, where, where can we kind of go from, go from here. The U.S. economy really plays a lot into what happens with gold. What are you seeing for the U.S. economy? Um, I think there's a couple things. Um, first quarter growth, as everybody um, is probably aware, was negative. Um, that's been chalked up to weather, mostly. Yeah. <laughs> and, we, and we actually think we're not you know, forecasting recession. And it's very unusual to have a negative GDP growth outside of recession. But the weather played a lot of havoc on that. We do think there's going to be a rebound in second quarter, and we're already seeing a lot of um, signs for that. Um, we're kind of thinking for the year around two and a half percent um, average for for the year. I think the big thing on the U.S. is that you know the Fed is starting to taper all of their their asset purchases. Um, but I don't think that we're going to see the real um, increase in rates that a lot of people are, are saying that, you know, once they decrease it, we're not seeing the first rate increase until sometime next year. And even then, we think it's going to be very gradual and slow that inflation overall is not going to um, peak as high as um, it's some think um, the money the Fed's put in just hasn't fed into the general economy as much. So. Now, mining equities haven't really started to recover all that much, but you think that maybe could change in 2014. What do you see happening next year? Um, I do. I think that once you see, I think there's a lot of um, potential in the mining, especially, you know, again, going back to the gold sector, we do um, some fundamental analysis on um, using macroeconomic um, principles and we really break down like the TSX into the sectors and then the subsectors and looking at the gold subsector fundamentally it's very undervalued and to, against the market against the rest of the market the gold sector is very um, undervalued and I think once the price starts to recover that there's some companies that have amazing you know really strong balance sheets that you know that the price is really having a, a downward effect on those companies equities so that's mostly what you're looking for, junior companies that have the stronger balance sheets. The stronger balance sheets and, and, and you know, just, I think that there's, there are some that can't wait out until, my, until the price goes back up and that's, you know, that's another thing is the ones that, that can't, unfortunately, will either, you know, kind of merge or um, do something else. So, now, how yeah. has your overall strategy changed in the last few years? In strategy is um, investment strategy. strategy. Um, I think that we still, you know, we last year we were we were a little bit more bullish than what we <laughs> should have been. Um, we were really expecting more of a turmoil in Europe, and that settled down a lot more than we than we thought. I think that we're lower for longer on rates even than last year. I think that it's going to be. You know, even when the recession hit in 2008, we kind of always said it's going to be kind of an L-shaped recovery. You kind of hit bottom and then just kind of floats along. And that's what we're seeing. But I think at the beginning of last year, you started to see things going up and you were hoping that, you know, that it would kind of continue. So I think we're um, really seeing things even out and we're not going to see any real strong increases in the next year. Um, yeah. 
but so. not real down either. Yeah. <laughs> so, Michelle Tell, well, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure having you. Hey, thank you.